Loading, loading, strap for the lyrics like I'm bowling, bowling Pushing on, keep rolling, rolling Hit it when they listen but I told him, told him One more time, your favourite MC's bonds are silver These raps here are golden, golden Cards on the table, there's no folding Spit bars at the club, zoning, zoning TikTok come to London, get ripped off Man get pissed off when I start lift off Sweet like flavours, cookie and biscuit Fronty, yeah, the bars I get rinsed off Pink up myself, yo, every time I tricked off Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ilona, I'm also known as Shikara Transformations. I'm an online health and fitness coach and I'm also a bodybuilder. Um, this is the intro to the intro, so this is why there is a different look and this is because since I made the intro yesterday in regards to what I posted on Instagram, which I'll talk about in that part rather than hashing over it all again, I just wanted to clarify a few things because I think it is important for me to also hold myself accountable when I'm doing things that are not correct or putting out potential misinformation. Now, I don't think I put out completely misinformation. Um, it's just that it's an area that needs to be more well researched. So, the person I responded to, I'm not going to name them, I just shared the conversation without their information because I'm not that kind of person, I don't want to push hate to somebody. And their message upset me a lot, I'll talk about it later why. The, the study that I linked uh, basically states that children that are obese are, 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 are at a greater risk of potentially getting autism or being neurodivergent. So, I didn't read that study properly because at that time uh, I was just like doing my cardio and I was upset by getting a message that I get that I was upset by the message saying that I don't deserve to have children because of the fact that I reposted an informational reel that I thought was informational that was completely new to me and I want to share it with other people to basically bring awareness to what potentially can you know the potential risks associated with being an obese Parent, I didn't mean for it to put any blame on anybody. I'm not saying anybody shouldn't be a parent or anything like that. It's just bringing awareness. Just like me being almost 40, 38 soon means that there is a greater risk of certain complications with pregnancy. But I'm I'm fully aware of that. I'm not in denial. I did since then look into more studies and where my problem where my full place is that I basically stated as fact that there is more than likely an increased risk. Now it does seem to be like that but from all the studies done there just needs to be more studies just to be sure that this correlation is a thing. I just wanted to acknowledge that that I put out something as a potential in my Instagram stories I said something as more or less like a fact that is evidence-based, that is researched, and I was wrong. It's not fully researched, it's something that is being researched. Now, I think the rise of obesity is new. The, uh, the, the Especially the testing around neurodivergence is a very new thing. Both of them rising could be a correlation, maybe it is not. But then again, I posted another information reel this morning where I think in Florida or California, in California, they're banning certain E numbers, additives, uh, flavor additives because they are linked to causing neurodivergence. So I think everything is kind of linked together and it's not a point of finger and it's absolutely not my intention to ever say that somebody is a bad parent, shouldn't be a parent or anything like that. It's just to bring awareness out there. Like I said, like I will say in the video later, I'm pretty sure is that, for example, I didn't know that if I'm pregnant, I shouldn't change cat litter. Like, it's just something that, like, I didn't know. So therefore, like, it's not a, it's not an attack on anybody at all. It's just to bring awareness because, like, I want to be a mother. So therefore, if there's anything that I can do to a, make awareness, because that's my job as an influencer, and therefore it's also my job to rectify statements that I've made that are wrong, but I want to influence people by sharing information. And yes, sometimes I'm at fault by sharing information that is not true, not fully correct. It's not incorrect, it just needs to be further researched. So I'm not 100% sure if I talked about that yesterday or not. But since then, I've received a lot of messages. Since then, I've received a lot of messages, many messages from people that either have autism or parents who have autistic children. And sharing their stories, thank you so much. But many of them do say that 
especially parents with autistic children, they have to be very mindful with what they give them for food because certain foods does aggravate the autism. I think it's just a new thing. I think it needs to be further researched. I'm wrong in saying that it's a scientific fact. It isn't a scientific fact. It's science that's being researched but needs further research. So on that note, you'll have Ilona from yesterday in the video today. And like we're now, I'm gonna go away and film another reaction that you'll probably get tomorrow or later in the week, we shall see. But I just want to address it because I think it's important that if I say something, even if I say my Instagram stories, um, that's not right or that's partially not, it's not wrong either, but I was misinformed. Um, I jumped to conclusions and I reacted I reacted in a way that I wasn't mean, but I reacted in a way that was, I should have perhaps been not as well reactionary, I guess. I wasn't mean, I didn't say any words or anything like that, but I, I was hurt, I'm not gonna lie. It's not a nice thing to be told. I need to also acknowledge that if I say things that are wrong, that, uh, or that are incorrect, let me rephrase it, it's not necessarily wrong, it's incorrect that I address it. And not just only in my Instagram stories, I want to address it here. And once again, I know that many of you guys have problems with eating disorders. Many of you guys have obesity. I'm not saying none of you deserve to be parents or mothers or fathers. I'm not saying any of that. I don't know what it's like to be a parent. I don't know what it's like to have food cravings. I understand that sometimes it's really hard to eat certain ways. I'm j All I did was just share something that I saw coming up in my reel scrolling Instagram and I found it interesting and that's it. I, there was no harm by it at that time I didn't write even a caption with it I just reposted it because I thought it was what I thought it was interesting and I think the more we learn the more we know the, the better we can try and do you know so that's it really I'm gonna go now enjoy the video guys Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ilona. I'm also known as Shikara Transformations. I'm an online health fitness coach and I'm also a bodybuilder that does a power lifting. If you're curious to see what that's all about, then check out my shorts, my vlogs and all of those things. Um, I've been a bit crap at vlogging lately because I just haven't really felt like it, even though I uploaded a vlog last weekend. Vlogged on Saturday, it was supposed to continue Sunday. Needed to have a full on doing nothing day yesterday and it was great at that the bare minimum i think i only got in something like six seven thousand steps which is like nothing so i was proper lazy all day and i needed it and then uh, it's monday today but you'll probably see this video tomorrow on tuesday um because today i have to edit a members only video that i meant to do yesterday but like i said i couldn't bother to do anything i needed to just have a full on lazy day of not doing that nothing not seeing anybody just laying there on my sofa and watching TV pretty much all day and that's what I did. Sometimes it needs to be done. Today we're going to be looking at Alexandra Rodriguez. She's got one of those uh, one of those videos she does every three to six months where she she's gonna rant about things. My guess is that this rant is gonna be around her parenting and obesity. I have no idea. I was just scrolling the farms. I saw she posted and it said, I'm never, talk I'm never talking about this again. And I was like, ha, huh, this sounds like a reaction that I want to do. But the reason it's not going to go up today is because... Hi. The reason it's not going to go up today is because the video is half an hour, which means that my reaction will be probably at least an hour. Sadly, I'm only with a Diet Coke. I'm not... Elk I'm not <coughs> Stop it, you're being naughty. Oh. Uh, but you are being naughty. Hey, trouble. You're being naughty. Hey, bum bum. Um, I'm not alcohol up to the, I'm not having myself some Prosecco. I know I'm a hoot when I'm slightly tipsy, but guys, I can't, um, usually speaking of film reactions in the morning, so I shouldn't be drinking alcohol then. And also to drink alcohol on a regular basis or a daily basis, it's, it's, not, it's not a good thing to do, is it? That won't be very health and fitnessy of me. So, uh, before we get into the video, mm -hmm. I caused a bit of an uproar on my Instagram. But basically what I like to do on my Instagram is I like to post memes, anime stuff, my dogs, my training, or things that I find interesting. Um, just things that I see that I got like, oh, I didn't know that, or oh, this is interesting, or oh, I wish other people would know about this. So, I reposted a person, a man, a doctor, talking about how there's basically potentially an increased risk with children being born with autism if both parents are obese. And that's it. Like, I didn't know that. 
I thought it was interesting and I, I genuinely didn't know that. I knew that if you're a woman and you're over a certain age that those risks increase, but I didn't know that that was the case. So a person responded very angrily, um, saying that basically, how dare I, and I don't deserve children because of that, which I thought was kind of extreme. And I didn't mean any malice or any harm with it. I, w I just found it interesting for the same reason that I literally didn't know until recently, when you're pregnant, you can't change cat litter. Because there's something, it, you can, to toxoplasma, is that what it's called? I think so. There's something within the cat litter and the cat feces that is not so bad for human beings, uh, for human beings, for adults, but for babies, it's potentially deadly. But I didn't know that, so I found it interesting. As somebody that is, believe it or not, yes, I am a biological woman, I would like to have children. So therefore, I find certain things Informate like I find certain things interesting if and when I'm in a position where I'm pregnant I would want to make sure that I do my best as possible as much as possible I do my best as much as possible to make sure that Whatever I'm consuming It's going to be beneficial to my baby now whether the the risk is potentially associated with processed food This I don't know um, and I, I will not, I, I never said that when you're obese, you're a bad parent. I, I don't, I don't necessarily think that, but I do think that there is a big misconception. This is why this fits into Alexandra Rodriguez. There's a bis, there is a big misconception with women that are pregnant, um, that they're eating for two and that they're just given to all their cravings. And like, like I said, I've never been pregnant, so I don't know what it's like to have cravings. However, if you are constantly eating Oh, sorry. If you're constantly eating fast food and processed food, which is already terrible for you as a normal person, um, it doesn't matter whether you're obese or not, it's just you should not be consuming foods like that in large quantities or on a regular basis. Of course, that's going to be bad for your baby because everything you eat directly impacts your baby. I understand food addiction is a thing. I understand binge eating is a thing. And I'm sure it's really difficult to manage that. Um, but also, it's like, there comes, when you're pregnant and there are certain risk factors involved because of lifestyle, because of your health, etc, etc, that, that's just it. It's just a risk factor. It doesn't mean you're more better or worse or anything like that. Like, I don't mean anything by that. I just think that there should be perhaps more education around it. And I think that as a future parent, a potential parent, you should put more due diligence on minimizing and mitigating those risks as much as possible. And then some of you guys responded back to me and you gave different perspectives and I really like that. This is one thing I do really enjoy about my community. I like it that if I say something or share something, people go like, yeah, okay, I see what you're saying, but have you looked at it from this perspective? Or like, it's not black and white like this. And I'm always open to listen to that because I want to learn, I want to improve, I want to be understanding and better myself. But yeah, if you're going to turn around to me and like talk to me like a piece of shit, then I also feel like I'm well within my right to go like, well, sorry, but I, I, this is, I disagree with you, you know, like there's no need to be like that. I still retain some decorum because at the end of the day, like, I don't feel the need to be horrible to people, but yeah, like it uh, kind of upset me a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. This is why I'm talking about it. So I'm not gonna pretend yourself I'm bothered by it. Yeah, I'm also kind of bothered by it. I think it's kind of a, a cruel thing to say to somebody like, oh, you don't deserve to have children because I shared some findings around being oh, like correlations between obesity and a potential increased risk of autism in children, which literally there are studies out there that I will link below. So. Anyway, now that's out of the way. Um, going to Alexandra Rodriguez, a lot of you do ask me to react to her. It's very, very difficult to react to her because her vlogs are extremely tedious and boring. They're nothing but holes. It's here and there, there's a nugget of information that I can react to. It's only when she does these sit down videos where she goes around, so I often have something to say. My biggest thing is, is that I just really want people to be healthy and do better for themselves. I want them to have a better quality of life because I feel like people deserve it. I, I come from a place of genuinely caring. It's just that I'm a bit blunt, I'm a bit direct, but it's because it frustrates me because I know that people have capabilities and people can do things. They just don't because they don't believe in themselves or they don't believe that they deserve it. And it's not true. You know, you, you can change. It will be really hard. I'm not gonna pretend here and say that it's easy. It's not easy, it's hard as fuck. And for some people it is harder, but that doesn't mean that 
you don't deserve change. Anyway, let's get into this video. All right, so we're skipping again. I think we're gonna get the, I'm never talking about this again here. Uh, she's gonna do her makeup and talk about something. So hopefully I have something to say. I'll leave the video down below. I normally always do. If you wanna watch the whole thing, then knock yourself out. But I'm here to react to the, what she's never talking about again. And we haven't got that yet, but hopefully we'll get that now. Jelly tents, I can't remember. Um what they're called it's like a oh they're called soft pink like the soft color so they're a little bit less intense which i'm really excited about um this one's called fresh and this one is called fizz so it's like pinky and peachy also can we appreciate our new little art here i got this on amazon and it just says i i literally thought she made that herself that looks i wouldn't pay for that that's literally something you can make yourself today's a good day so i hope it can like add some some cheer and some love and just some good vibes to your day because i'm only sitting right here doing my makeup and i think it's like pretty much perfectly in frame if i have the camera right here so um i don't know i thought it was just a nice little positive positive background moment but i also while i do my makeup i wanted to have a little bit of a chat because i had like just such a moment the other night when i was watching this show on tv i put it on youtube tv because that's what we use for like kind of cable energy and on the home yes you want to come for a cuddle huh is that what it is you want to come for a cuddle Come on then. We have, a, we have a Rosie joining us. She wants to cuddle. Homepage was a show called um, TV Moments That Shaped History, right? And I was like, ooh, this looks fun and interesting. Um, I'd never watched it before. I was just like immediately intrigued. And this one was all about Oprah. That is so much foundation. <laughs> oh, I'm completely out of the frame. That's a lot of foundation in it. I know that like, the sponge soaks all over that, but I, one thing I don't understand, I was like, well, that she's an influencer and like, well, well I, I put on some makeup when I do my reactions. When I vlog, I don't always put on makeup. It depends on whether I'm going to go out to do things. I put on like some basic stuff, but I don't understand how she has uh, the time and energy to like do a full beat all the time when you're pregnant, you know, or when you're having a baby. Surely that's, I don't know, like, but then again, you maybe want to look nice, you know? I am all for like looking, wanting to, if you want to look nice, then you should make an effort to look nice. Why not? And, and maybe this moment. I literally don't watch her, I don't follow her, I have no idea what she got, but maybe this is her 20 minutes of me time. Which is also something that uh, I advocate for, for some of my clients who are parents and they have they are busy and they have jobs and they're like, oh, it's sometimes so hard to find the time to train and I'm like, look, I know it is, but also see that time as just your you time. Some time for you where you're not working, you're not children, you're not with children, you're not doing anything else, but just for that 45 minutes, hour, half an hour, however, however long you can fit in, you're doing something for you. And it's very important to do that. You know, you have to make time for yourself sometimes. In TV history, moment that shaped TV history, TV moment that shaped history. And it was all about when she had lost like 60 something pounds and she pulled out on this red wagon, um, like 60 something pounds of fat and was talking about how disgusting it was. And like, you know, um, like 60 something pounds of fat. That's a little fat in it. So this is why I this is why I always say first of all Oprah looks skinny as fuck here, but this is always why I say when people say like oh people get too fixated on w scale weight loss and not fat loss fat loss and weight loss are not the same thing you need to go by how you look how clothes feel and um, especially if you do resistance training it's very normal to not lose a lot of weight but the eyes also don't deceive you. <laughs> If somebody's claiming that they're losing 30 pounds, but you can't see it, you don't understand how much 30 pounds of fat is. It's a lot. It's a lot. You look like a different person with 30 pounds of fat loss. And was talking about how disgusting it was. And like, you know, just talking about her weight loss, right? It had showed women who, um, you know, had seen that, you know, live in that time. And they said it's like this moment in history, in TV history, that like, it just has like stuck with them, you know? And it was such a pain. I have a little ladybug on me. They're good luck, right? Oh, it fell to the floor. No, it's my shoe. Get off, little ladybug. In TV history. And then the rest of the episode continued to talk about, you know, Oprah and her, um, you know, her career, her amazing career. And, you know, kind of talking more just about the part regarding her weight and how it was always just this huge public topic. Like, oh my gosh, they showed so much. I was immediately, like, entranced, um, even though it was just, like, kind of hard to watch because it all just made me very sad. Um, it was just, it was mostly just interesting because it was so societal. It I wonder where she's gonna go with this. It just, it showed how over the years, everything was just centered around her weight. Like constantly, no. this was kind of before, um, you know, my time. It was constantly her losing and gaining weight and being talked about. And like, she was even getting interviewed on the show once and talking about how she needed to lose more weight. And it's just like, it was so much. And well, it's just been this huge, I mean, this is not new information. 
I don't know, like, I'm kind of of the opinion that if you're, um, like, maybe Oprah's different. Sorry, let's come figure out the angle for the, the camera here. Like, if you're a job, don't eat the ladybug. No, I'm kind of of the opinion that if you're being paid to look a certain way, and um, maybe it's different with talk show hosts because, like, they don't really need to look a certain way. But sometimes people say, like, oh, yeah, models this and actors this. It's like, I'm sorry, but if you get paid, like, fucking $10 million a year to look good, yeah, you should fucking look good. Like, if your job is to look good, to be in shape, you, yeah, you should be in shape. Or at least be in shape for when you have a movie role or you need to walk on a catwalk. I, I don't really understand it. It's literally your job. Like any other job. You know, part of the, their job is to look good. But though Oprah is different. I mean, like, she's a, a talk show host, so I guess there's not necessarily as much of a, a pressure on it. But, yeah. Uh, anyway. Information ...to a lot of people, but it just, like, I didn't realize how much her weight had been talked about during her career. I always knew that there was, like, you know, some of it I knew back when she was like part of Weight Watchers when I was doing Weight Watchers and you know it kind of also watching that it made me really realize how much like our generation of parents had to go through and why a lot of them were the way that they were slash can still be because it was so normal in the society and I'm very grateful that like yeah it's like back in those days they they tried to not normalize obesity and like I, yeah I think it's wrong like I do agree I think that the, the diet industry the fitness industry with the shakes and the this and the that and the quick fixes I'm not for that I'm for healthy lifestyles um, and again I will always say bodybuilding preparations is not healthy of course it's not but I'm for healthy lifestyles but at the same time we're now in a situation where people are in complete denial about obesity being a problem now a large percentage of the population is overweight and obese there's a fairly large percentage, especially in America, of people that are like super morbidly obese. I think it's up like 20 or 30 percent. Whereas like you're looking at like really, really large human beings and it's not normal. It's not OK. We're not meant to be like that as human beings. And I don't think we should shame people. I don't. We should help people. We should educate people. We should make people aware. Um, but also to normalize it is not right. But then I also fully agree. Yes, Rosie, you have to wait, baby. It's not time yet. We went for a pee not so long ago. No, no. And I also do think that, um, you know, it's... Oh, I forgot my train of thought there because then my dog was after me. I also believe that, uh, you know, the, 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 the diet industry or whatever they want to call it, I do think it's a thing. I do think it is very difficult to navigate, to understand what's right, what's not right. Do quick fixes, do the this, do the that, do the keto, do the high carb, do the low carb, do the cardio, do the this. Like I understand that you know, now you get the issue of like with fitness Instagram and stuff like that. Now you get the problem with fitness social media where you get these people to do all of these stupid ass workouts and like, oh my God, just do this exercise every single day for a week and you'll get like you get washboard abs or like, oh my God, do these exercises every single day and you'll get like a BBL. No, you don't. Like, you cannot get a BBL effect by doing, like, stupid, like, fire hydrants and, like, body weight squats. I don't give a fuck if you do a million of them. You're not going to get it. You need to have weights. So even within the fitness industry, there's a lot of misinformation out there. And I believe it's definitely very difficult to navigate. Uh, on, and then they, there's, a, of course, the, the advertisement, the, the hyper-palatable foods that make people addicted. And then normalizing it, which is also a problem. So yes, I have, I understand it's a very complex and a very dynamic manner. I get it. I get it's hard. And this is why I'm genuinely passionate about what I do, because I want people to be better for themselves. I want people to be healthy for themselves. I don't want them to get lost in diet culture. This is why I've never preached anything extreme on my channel. Maybe like I've learned over the years, I've changed my way of thinking over the years. Um, but I've never said like don't do this or don't do that. It's always been moderation for example And I do think for example carbohydrate intake Yeah, if you have certain health problems if you're very large and you are very sedentary You're not gonna need as large a carb intake as somebody that's very active or there's somebody like a hard gainer I think carb intake should be should be um, Should be relevant to your energy output your body type and like whether you have underlying medical problems but otherwise, like, I don't, ex I don't suggest anything extreme. Just eat most of your own food, like cook most of your own food, eat a lot of protein, have your healthy fats, enjoy foods in moderation, be sensible. If you overeat one day, then just don't restrict the next day. But also, if you don't feel hungry, don't eat. Um, but yeah, intuitive eating, no, I'm not, I think it can work. 
I just don't think it will work for people that are morbidly obese because their their hunger signaling doesn't work properly. So uh, yeah, if you want to lose weight, you're gonna have to restrict. Part of losing weight is restriction, and that doesn't mean you're eating disordered. It's an eating disorder if you're having an apple and a chicken breast today. Yeah, that's an eating disorder. But guess what? If you want to lose fat, you're going to have to cut out food. You can't just give in to cravings. You're going to have to measure things out. That's, that's how that works. That's not restriction. That's just trying to achieve a goal. In some of my pivotal years was when like the body positive community started and that whole movement because I do feel like we really needed that. I have so many thoughts right now. I feel like I'm just about to babble for a very long time, so I apologize. But like, it's all just very. I just cannot get over how much makeup she uses. Like, I use some of these products as well, and I just don't use nowhere near as much. But then I guess maybe I'm I'm a bit older than her, and like, my skin is maybe not as uh, giving. If I use this, if I use this much foundation. And like like liquid, even if it's liquid, like creams, creamy um, concealer, not concealers, and uh, yeah, concealers and like cream products and stuff like that. It just ages me so much. My boyfriend keeps telling me, he's like, why do you never film a reaction without makeup? He's like, you look so much younger. I'm like, yeah, I know I do. But I also like to put on makeup and like look a certain way. I don't put on a lot, but I like to put on makeup. I don't know, I just think it's fun. But I do know that if I put on a lot of heavy makeup, like have foundations and stuff, it just makes me look really old, so this is why I like I've said it before, but I need to stick with CC creams. CC creams uh, is basically the way forward for me, and like with the sponge, just to um, make it look not as uh, thick, like uh, that soaks so, so it soaks up a bit more. But yeah, when you get over a certain age, you've got to be a bit careful with a lot of makeup because it does make you look older. Prevalent on my mind right now. Watching that, I got sucked in for like a while. I was so just shocked. Um, at how much also just around that time era you know emphasis was put on you know being thin and losing weight and like the aerobics craze around that time and like how important it was to bounce back after having a baby and to look good for your man and like it was just but why why is that a bad thing though like first of all being pregnant should not be an excuse to put on shit tons of weight of course you're gonna gain weight i'm not saying maintain your physique but when you're pregnant you don't have to eat for two it's the first two trimesters, I think you have to eat up to two to three hundred calories extra and the last trimester is around five hundred calories extra. So you eat you need to eat more, of course you're gonna gain weight, your hormones are changing, you have a baby inside of you. Like it's normal to gain like from my understanding it's anywhere from like ten to twenty, thirty pounds is normal and then usually after you've had a baby that kind of comes down in no time. But when you get these women that gain like fifty, sixty pounds, like Maybe some some of it is just unfortunate because of hormones, but I'm sure a lot of it is also because people just eat a lot. They use it as a reason to become sedentary and to eat a lot. And so there's nothing wrong with wanting to get back to where you were before after you've had a baby. You should want to be healthy because, again, it's very taxing to take care of a small child. They take a lot of work. And also, like, what's wrong with wanting to look good for your man? I don't get that either. I've had this conversation with my boyfriend and like maybe some people will disagree with this but you know I he's been overweight and he's lost weight since we've been together and I knew he was overweight when we got together I still liked him but I also knew that I, I eat healthy and I live a certain lifestyle and if you're gonna be with me you're gonna lose weight so not that I'm forcing him I don't he doesn't count calories I just give him healthy whole foods to eat and he's lost weight since we've been together but you know I like I like him a certain way, but if he gains like 60 pounds, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just not going to find him attractive. Doesn't mean I'm going to leave him. No, but I'm going to definitely be like, we need to work on it. Same thing with me. I think he's well with it. He gets with me looking a certain way. He got with me being a fitness woman, to be in shape that works out, that does certain things. If in two years time, I go from that to sitting around, drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, watching fucking TV dramas all day long, long and eating chips and gaining weight, that's not the woman that he got with. And I'm not saying you have to stay exactly who you are, but there's nothing wrong with wanting to have attraction to your partner and being attracted to your partner, you know? At the end of the day, having sexual attraction it's kind of an important part of a relationship. It's nice to look good for your partner. It's nice to want your partner, to have your partner looking at you a certain way. So yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with being like, I like you, I love you, but yeah, if you're gonna gain a lot of weight, I'm not okay with that, you know? Like, I'm not gonna find it attractive because I'm, and that's maybe, I'm fat phobic, fine, I'll accept it, but I'm not attracted to super morbidly obese bodies. I don't find it attractive. I can love you as a person, but, 
I can guarantee there will not be much sexy times in the bed. And also when you are like that, there cannot be much sexy time because all your hormones are out of whack. So I think it's like there's a difference between forcing your partner to look a certain way and like, oh, the second you gain like five or 10 pounds, like you're gone. Of course, don't be like that. But at the same time, there's nothing wrong with being like, okay, when somebody's gaining like 15, 20, 30 pounds, and you kind of go like, ah, maybe we should do something about it. You know, like, let's try it together. Let's tidy up the diet together. Let's do a bit more exercise. I don't see what's wrong with that. Because why would you want to be with somebody that you're not sexually attracted to? It's really, really intense. Not to say that we don't even still have that nowadays, but it was like really intense around like the 80s and stuff. And Oprah's weight was just like this massive public conversation. And it made me think about my public internet journey and how yeah, but it's slightly different though. You pretended to like lose weight uh, through diet and then you had secret operations and you're using filters. You're, you're portraying yourself to be something that you're not. This is very different from a woman that's just naturally struggling with her weight up and down. I believe Oprah has been pretty much open and honest about it. You have, you've had liposuction, tummy tucks and other shit and you're not telling people about it. This is why people have an issue with it. You're pretending to be healthy on a weight loss journey and then you're eating shit. So like, yeah, people are going, if you're going to come online saying like, oh yeah, I'm making all this effort and eating healthy, but then like all you eat is just like fucking basically processed food. Yeah, people are going to have an issue with it. How on such a way, way smaller scale, I kind of related, you know, it made me really reflect back on my internet life and career online and how much of it has been about my weight, also by my own doing. And I was, I was looking back at my old videos and like my top performing videos of all time, it's all weight related. Like it is like so <laughs> mind boggling. I've yeah, but then, oh, hold on, what's she saying? Hey, way smaller scale. I kind of related, you know, it made me really reflect back on my internet life and career online and how much of it has been about my weight, also by my own doing. And I was, I was looking back at my old videos and like my top performing videos of all time, it's all weight related. Like it. it so she is upset about that people talk about her weight, addressing my failed weight loss surgery, gastric bypass, gastric bypass, weight, weight, I want to lose weight. And then she gets upset when people say something about it. Okay. Is like so <laughs> mind boggling. I've shared my weight loss surgeries. There's like, uh, I'm losing weight. I'm going to the gym. I'm on Weight Watchers. I want to lose weight for this reason. Jim, she did the co-pilot thing as well, which is just completely useless, we know. Oh my gosh, I'm gaining weight. My failed weight loss surgeries. It's like, <laughs> I'm so done with it. Like I've never been more done. And I feel like I've ever so- We'll, we'll see. Briefly talked about- If those are the kind of videos that make money, we, we will see being done with like talking about weight and all that stuff but like i hate how it's such a big part of my internet history because i am so much more than that and like yeah, but bro that's kind of like your own doing though it's just like part of my channel my image is that like i do the bodybuilding thing i'm a fitness chick i kind of suddenly be like well you can't judge me by that it's like people have opinions on me I i'm open about the the the, 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 the i've used performance enhancers in the past people have opinions and thoughts about this i can't get them butthurt over that so that's that's how it is, isn't it? Like if you're choosing to put something out there, people are going to talk to you about it. If I'm going to say that I'm natural, but then people find out that I'm taking something, guess what? People are going to call me out, as they should do, rightfully. You know, it's just if I'm trying to justify something a certain way and I'm being dishonest with my audience, people call me out, then that's how it should be. I just don't get this. I really don't understand what she's trying to say here. It's such a bummer that it was such a prevalent part of like my life online for so long, even though I know a lot of people related to struggling with weight, but I just like, I just think everything about weight. I'm so like, it's just, it's worn out. It's been worn. Okay. Yeah. So it's just better to pretend it's not an issue. Stick your head in the head in the sand and let's go on with life. Okay. Worn out. I wish I could go back and just like, you know, change all those big videos that I've made and talking about weight so much because honestly, like it makes me feel like part of the problem considering how much emphasis I put on weight online for so long. I also do give myself a lot of grace because I am a product of- Of, of course she does. Ever met a fat loss, weight loss influencer that does things and they're doing things wrong, but yet they're still proud of everything that they've done even though they do the bare minimum? Find me one, I'm yet to see. My environment and society and I, new and only can like grow and do better um 
and that's one of the reasons I am very grateful for like evolving online and you know learning to take off so much emphasis from weight and focus on clearing all of this the right way I honestly what I'm trying to say is I just I hate how much I've talked about my weight over the years on my channel and like and the only reason why she hates it is because there's been backlash because she keeps saying that she's gonna get healthier she has all these fucking operations and she just basically it's not as big as she has ever been but she loses weight and gains it back she's she's very practically not changed but she does all this stuff and then she lies about it so you will not catch me talking about that <laughs> you will not you will not catch me talking about it anymore like i have absolutely no desire i am so much more than my weight you are so much more than your weight and quite frankly let's just shut the f up about it actually i feel like i want to go through and even just like private all those videos that are like around my weight um but like i know it's also a part of my history online and i don't know i, I just have, I have no desire to leave them up though let me know what you guys think about that i feel like i should just private them because like i don't like granted people have seen that like at the end of the day you should do what you feel is right like why do you even ask permission i don't get that bottom line is society was very different when i was growing up and i think my mom did the best that she could and i think she did what was all very normal you know when i was growing up considering that like my other chubby friends were also doing jenny craig diets and things like that um it was a very unfortunately normal thing at the time and i'm so so grateful that like we've moved past that as a society um you know we're not perfect by any means i'm not sure why i stand on like sticking your children on a diet i just think that if your kids overweight or obese it's it's kind of your fault as a parent because you should feed them properly but if they are like that then yeah you're gonna have to try and get them to a healthier weight part of that is some sort of calorie deficit or minimizing treats that they're getting you know maybe give them water instead of juices in their lunch boxes like you know there's things there's changes you can make you don't have to put them on something you don't even have to tell them they're on a diet like a kid doesn't know like they don't know if they're on a diet or not like you just make changes right just gradually but don't you don't have to shame them you don't have to weigh them you just like i don't know it's like i had to like since when i had my after i've had my dogs castrated or um spade spade because they're girls they gained some weight which is normal guess what i just reduced their food slightly they lost weight with my cat, I'm still trying. It's really hard for a cat to lose weight by the looks of things, but she's losing weight. And then I, I didn't realize she was overweight at all. Obviously, I don't want to have overweight animals, plus the cat's a bit harder than with the dogs. But yeah, like part of that is you just reduce food volume. Like you can do that. You don't have, if you can see your child's getting overweight, you don't have to shame them or make them feel bad or like get them to weigh themselves. Just reduce their food and improve the food quality. That should do the trick. Maybe get them to be a bit more active. Go for walks with them. Do active things. I don't know. That's like, it's, you don't have to turn it into uh, an obvious problem. Which I understand if you do stuff like that, I can definitely see how that can cause to disordered eating, shame, problems later in life. Of course it does. I understand that. But yeah, you don't have to be blatant about it. But we've come like a really, a really long way, like in terms of how we talk about bodies. And I want to raise my son to not even look at bodies in a way of like analyzing them. Like we don't talk about people's bodies period fix it your words have power and your words matter i want to raise anderson to look at food as fuel and not at yeah, but you can only look at food as fuel if it's proper food you don't look at food as fuel you just look at it as fucking treats because she eats shit all the time it's never nutritious as calories in terms of like needing to earn this and burn calories and i want him to also be an intuitive eater because that was a really helpful thing when i went through that i went through it's very it's been it's worked out great for her as we can see intuitive eating that phase another thing it's just like another thing that i've always talked about it's like always about like food and weight loss and all this stuff and now if you don't notice i'm just posting like recipes because like also i'm not gonna be shamed because i'm fat into not posting food <laughs> like if i want to go to the fair and eat something with my mom i'm gonna show it if i want to cook i think the problem is more is that what they often post is just really really unhealthy we rarely see actually just normal food it's always takeouts fast foods unhealthy things so this is why you can't be an intuitive eater when you're ob obese because you are wired through food addiction to want to eat shit that's not good for you. Cook dinner to eat and survive. I'm going to cook it and post it. I am so done with every stigma around my body and it being the biggest topic all the time. I want Anderson to be able to listen to his hunger cues and not have those get messed up by... Like it's working out so well for her. How are you going to teach something to somebody when you don't know how to do it yourself? That I just don't get that. I diet culture because I feel like that totally happened to me and to a lot of people where you, you're restricted and then you binge because you were restricted and then it's just this cycle and it's just, it's so 
toxic. When he's hungry, he can eat. When he's not hungry, he won't be forced to eat. You know what I mean? It's like, I just want food to be a very safe space for him. And I want movement to be a safe space for him. I want movement to be about feeling good and healthy and strong and eating balanced to feel healthy and good and strong and to be aware of how certain foods make his body feel. And why is she preaching all of this and not applying it to herself? I just don't get it. If you were eating intuitively, you wouldn't be fucking morbidly obese. It's as simple as that. I just, Yar and I are extremely aligned with that and I'm very, very grateful. And Yarman's also been like a huge factor. Yar coming into my life has been a blessing in a million different ways, but that was one of them where I was so in awe watching him exercise for um purely health and to feel good and to be able to do things you know and i'm is it never waste people who exercise i like that you look good as a nice byproduct but like most people exercise for health no i'm so excited to start working out again because honestly like the older i get to i want to be able to keep up with anderson i want to be able to easily carry him as he gets bigger and carrying his car seat and just playing like that's what it's about it's not about looking a certain way to fit into society's yeah, but the thing is, is that I agree, like, it's really good to want to be fitter and healthier for those reasons, but you need to lose weight in the process of doing so, because your weight will hinder you in that, in those attempts. You can say what you want, but if you're, like, 350 pounds, like what she is, you're not going to be able to be, like, if she doesn't even work out, like, if you're a big person and you work out, it's one thing, at least there's some stamina there, but when you're a big person and you don't work out, Everything is just a lot more effort because you just don't have the physical strength or the stamina there. Standard of beauty, like, it's just, it's so nice to finally be past that point where I feel like I've healed from that. But I'm just really overall feeling super reflective about my internet history and the footprint I have left about weight and weight loss and it just being this huge point of contention and talking for so long. I don't regret sharing, you know, my gastric bypass and I don't regret having it at all. Like, I've kept off almost 100 pounds since having it. I know. That is a fat lie and my battery is about to die. There is absolutely no way that she lost 100 pounds and that she's kept it off. I think at the most she lost like 60 pounds and I think she probably regained 20 or 30 of that back. A lot of people say that I've gained it all back, it's just not true. But also it's like, why are we talking about that? <laughs> because you're lying. That's why people are talking about it because you're lying. Why are we talking about that? That is like the real question here. Why are we so obsessed with weight? And I hate to break it to you, society. No, it's because you've put it out there, you've put yourself, you've made videos saying you're going on weight loss journey, having had operations, and then you keep failing. That's why we talk about it. Nobody would talk about you if you're just a big person that's a big person that wants to be a big person. You've made it about that. That's why people talk about it. We're all brainwashed. I think about if the media didn't exist, how different everything, everything would be if there wasn't a if there was no media, you wouldn't have a job and an income, so be glad Preconceived media. notion of beauty and a standard and talking about bodies and weight and just how this diet industry is just this huge billion dollar industry and how it's all just to profit off of us. Anyway, all of this because- As is the medical industry profiting off people that are sick and obese and to keep them sick and put them on medications, etc, etc. But, you know, big pharma, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the diet industry. That's a lot worse compared to the billions and billions that go into the big pharma. Because of me watching poor Isn't Oprah it? go through this constant weight yo-yo, which so many people do. I know so many people their whole life that have gone up and down and up and down and up and down. And it's just exhausting. And it's like, it's one of those things too. It's like hey. when you get so complimented from losing weight, then when you gain weight, you feel horrible because everyone praised you when you were losing weight. And it's like, well, am I less than if I gain weight? Like just everyone, stop, just stop. The madness it honestly just broke my heart watching oprah go through so much so much in the public eye with her weight it, it was just awful and don't worry oprah's fine oprah was what one of the richest women in hollywood at one point i'm sure she's okay she can afford a therapist she's fine she's rolling in the monies she is a victim of, of that of society and diet culture and thin culture and unfortunately her public journey going through that shaped a lot of other people and it's like this domino effect but it's just it's, it's all around and it's just it's time we all shut the cup but yeah i don't know i think i am gonna just private private my weight videos i think weight related i just i want nothing to do with any of that anymore and I, anyway let me know if, if any of that resonated with you guys i will check back in with you guys later all right you guys it is a few hours later i did my hair and i one thing is that she's definitely good at doing makeup. I'll give her that. She does know how to make herself look very pretty. I'm wearing it down for several hours. It's a miracle. I know. <sighs> I'm trying. I want to get used to wearing my hair down. And I think headbands are going to be a crucial part of that for me because it gets it out of my face. That's what it is. It's like a stimulation thing. I don't... 
Uh, right, I think that's the end of the video. I don't really care about the dog stuff, to be honest. Um, I'm gonna go because this is a long ass video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. If you dislike the video, then let me know down below why. Uh, and yeah, like I said, do subscribe if you can. I made it to 50K, would love to get to 60K. 100K is the ultimate goal. Um, and if you have made it this far, let's insert a, let's insert a pram emoji. And I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.